Mm, hello everyone. Today we're going to have statistics, uh, statistical intervals for single sample. Um, this would be the topics that contains the non-normal distribution or the non, um, the non-z distribution. So we're going to have other distributions aside from the z distribution. So we're going to still apply statistical methods in the analysis of data. So confidence interval on the mean, variance, and known. If x bar and s are mean and standard deviation of a random variable from a normal di distribution with unknown variance sigma squared, a 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval on its on mu is given by um, x bar minus t of alpha over 2 n minus 1 s over square root of n. Uh, and the, the upper limit would be x bar plus t alpha over 2 n minus 1 s over square root of n. Where t of alpha over 2 n minus 1 is the upper alpha over 2 100% point of the t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. For one-sided confidence bound on the mean, a normal distribution are also of interest and are easy to find. Uh, simply use um, only the uh, appropriate lower or upper confidence limit from equation 8-16. So we're just, we're not going to divide alpha by 2. So it would be x bar minus t alpha n minus 1 s over square root of n and x bar plus t alpha n minus 1 s over square root of n. Examples, find the values of the following percentile, t of 0 0.02515. So for the first one, we're looking for uh, the value under the t distribution, so 0 0.02515. So if it is positive, we're looking at the right side, if it is negative at the left side. So I think this would be 2.131. You look at 15 dun sa left, uh, left column and then 0 0.025 at the header of the columns. Next would be T of 0 0.05 and then 10. This is 1.812. We take absolute value. Um, positive is at the right side, negative at the left side. Next, we have T of 0 0.120. So that is 1.325. And then we have T of 0 0.001. 30. So this is 3.385. Determine the T percentile that is required to construct each of the following two-sided confidence intervals. So take note, two-sided confidence interval. So for 8.8-25, letter A, Two-sided, no? so we have 1 minus alpha is 0 0.95, so alpha over 2 is, so 1 minus alpha is 0 0.95, so alpha is 0 0.05, so alpha over 2 is 0 0.025. So T of 0 0.025, 12. So, T of 0 0.02512 is 2.179. So, 2.179, 2.0. 
let's have a clearer copy of this. So T of 0 0.025 And then 12 is 2.179 for letter B so this is still 95% so 1 minus alpha is 0 0.95 alpha over 2 is 0 0.025 so we're looking for T of 0 0.025 with degree of freedom 24 so this is 2.064 for letter C. So 99%, so 1 minus alpha is 0 0.99. So alpha over 2 is 0 0.005. So T of 0 0.005, degree of freedom is 13. So this is 3.012. The numbers are coming from the T distribution table. For letter D, so alpha is 99, uh, alpha is 0 0.01, so alpha over 2 is 0 0.005. So T of 0 0.005, degree of freedom 15 is 2.947 so since the values are now ready we can now uh, proceed on solving problems the solar energy consumed in the US by year from 1989 to 2004 is shown in the table below. As, uh, check the assumption for normality in the population. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the mean solar energy consumed. So these are the data. So we need to identify the statistical properties of this data set. So upon encoding this data, on our solver so we have 55.291 until 63.287 it is uh, the mean the sample size would be 4 times 4 so that's 16 data the mean and standard deviation of the sample was already computed so for 95% confidence interval alpha is 0 0.05 alpha over 2 is 0 0.05 over 2 the degree of freedom V is computed as N minus 1. So this is 16 minus 1. So that's 15. If we're looking for the two-sided confidence interval, so 0 0.02515 would give us a T value of 2.131. So the range of values for mu is from 63.33 67.83 another problem the brightness of a television picture tube can be evaluated by measuring the amount of current required to achieve, uh, to achieve particular brightness level a sample of 10 so sample of 10 tubes in 301 as uh, 317.2 and standard deviation 15.7 so state the necessary assumption about the underlying distribution data so this comes from a population a parent population of a normally distributed data and the events must be independent so we're looking for 99% confidence interval so under the t distribution for mean of a known variance data set n is 10 x bar 317.2 and s 15.7 so degree of freedom is 10 minus 1 so if your alpha is 1 uh, 
1 minus 0 0.99, so that's 0 0.01, divided by 2 for two-sided confidence interval. So that would be 0 0.005. So that would give us a T distribution of 3.25. And substituting that on the formula, we have the, uh, the confidence interval. This comes from mu is equal to x bar plus for the upper limit minus for the lower limit t s over square root of n. So upon solving this, this would be the result. Now another type of distribution is the non-symmetric distribution of the chi-squared. So, chi-square distribution. Let x1, x2, up to xn be a random variable from the normal distribution with mean, mu, and variance sigma squared. And let s squared be the sample variance. Then the random variable chi-squared is equal to n minus 1 s squared over sigma squared. Has a chi-square distribution with degree of freedom is still n minus 1. So, Observe that it is no longer symmetrical and the area is located to the right. So this is for alpha. This would be 1 minus alpha. For confidence interval on the variance, if S squared is the sample variance, of a random sample of n observations from a normal distribution with a known variance sigma squared, then a 100 times 1 minus alpha squared, uh, 1, 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval on sigma squared is given by n minus 1 s squared over chi squared of alpha over 2 n minus 1. And the upper limit would be n minus 1 s squared over chi squared of 1 minus alpha over 2 n minus 1. Now take note that on the upper side, you have your 1 minus alpha over 2. And for the lower side, we have alpha over 2. So we're chi squared of alpha over 2 and chi squared of 1 minus alpha over 2 are the upper and lower 100 times alpha over 2 percentage points of the chi squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom respectively. So a confidence interval for chi, uh, for sigma has a lower and upper confidence limits that are square roots of the corresponding limits in the variance. So for one-sided confidence bound for the variance, it would be n minus 1 s squared over chi squared. But taking note that for the lower limit, it would be for alpha. And for upper limit, 1 minus alpha. So let's uh, let's evaluate table values. For the first one, we need to find the chi-squared of 0 0.0510. So under the chi-squared table, you check for 0 0.05 above and degree of freedom at the left side, 10. So this is 18.307. Next would be chi-squared of 0 0.02515 so this is 27.488 next chi squared of 0 0.01 12 so this is 26.217 you may pause and then check this one uh, using your cal uh, using your excel or using your um, statistical tables. Next, chi squared of 0 0.9520. So that's 
0.0851, correct. So, 0 0.0510, 0 0.02515, 0 0.0112, 0.9520. Next, chi squared of 0 0.9918. So that's 7.015. Next is chi squared of 0 0.99516. So that's 5.142. And finally, we have chi squared of 0 0.00525. So that is 46.928. Next one. Determine chi squared percentile that is required to construct each of the following confidence interval. So 95% degree of freedom, 24 upper side lower. So we are go since we're looking for upper side, so that's 1 minus alpha is 0 0.95. So this is one-sided, so degree of freedom is 24. So chi squared of 0 0.95, 24. So observe that. This is 1 minus alpha, and for upper, we use 1 minus alpha. For lower, we use alpha. Next, one-sided. So, this would be... So, since this is still all... Uh, this is one-sided, so alpha is 99%, so 0. 0, 1, with degree of freedom 9. So we're looking for chi squared of 0 0.019. 9. And then for confidence interval for 90%, two sided. So degree of freedom is 25. So alpha over 2 is 0 0.05. And 1 minus alpha over 2 is 0 0.95. So for chi squared of 0 0.0525 and chi squared of 0.9525. We would be checking the values from our statistical table. So for 0 0.9524, 24. Make sure that it is the chi squared table. So on First one is 0 0.9524. 24. So this is 13.848. For 0 0.01, 9. And for two-sided, 0 0.0525, 37.652. And for 0 0.9525, it's So let's have a worded problem. A manufacturer of a car batteries claims that the batteries will last on the average three with a variance of one year. If five of these batteries have lifetimes 1.9, 2.4, 3, 3.5, and 4.2 years, construct a 95% confidence interval for sigma squared and decide whether the manufacturer's claim that sigma squared is equal to one is valid. Assume um, the population of battery lives to be approximately normally distributed. So, first, we encode the given data to Excel solver and then compute for mean, median, mode, standard deviation, and others. 
you're going to observe that the mean is 3. So there's no problem with the claim. The claim is 3. The sample mean is 3. So the sample size was computed as or will be counted as 5 elements. The degree of freedom is n minus 1, so 4. So the sample size is 5. The degree of freedom is 4. If you're going to calculate the standard deviation of this sample, it is 0 0.90277. For 95% um, confidence interval, so uh, let's have it 99%. So for 99% confidence interval, so alpha is 0 0.01 this would be the lower confidence statistic 0 0.005 for upper bound it would be 0 0.995 so the corresponding chi squared would be these two values and this is the confidence interval for variance taking the square root for both the upper and the lower limit we will be having the confidence interval for the standard deviation this is the 99% confidence interval. Next, a random sample of 20. So n is 20 and yielded mean of 72 and variance 16. So if the variance is 16, the standard deviation is 4. Assume that the scores are normally distributed. Construct a 98% confidence interval. So, 98% confidence interval means um, alpha of 0 0.02, so alpha over 2 is 0 0.01, and 1 minus alpha over 2 is 0.99. So, for all of these problems, um, sigma squared is computed as n minus 1 s squared over the given chi squared. So this is for the confidence interval for the mean and the variance, uh, for the variance and the standard deviation. So as a question, um, is sigma squared equal to one valid? Now to answer that, we are just going to check whether one is in the interval. So, can we assume that sigma squared is equal to 1? Since um, 1 is in between 0.214 and 15.75, uh, so we can assume that the variance is equal to 1. While on the second example, variance cannot be assumed to be equal to 1. It is 16. It, is, it should be close to 16. These are the references used to create this study or this um, lesson.